What's up, baby? What's up? Welcome back to the podcast. It's been a minute. Yeah, we had some troubles. <laughs> we did have some troubles. So we actually got so pissed off at all of the equipment and our troubles. We just said, forget it for like a month, right? Uh, yeah, we were a little busy, but yeah. It I was, mean, things were busy. It was, we were frustrated with it. How many times did it fail on us, man? Like two or three, I think. In a row. Different problems each time. Yeah. What were the problems? Let's go through the problems. First time, I don't know, the thing messed up. It, the recording let's, button let's wasn't specifically, red. Let's specifically the, say what was the problem. The recording button? Oh, me. Okay. Uh, the second time was the thing randomly just stopped recording. Yeah, that sucked. And didn't do it. And then the third time was we were going and everything was good. And then like halfway through the podcast, it just randomly decided to pop up with the SD card malfunctioned and uh, nothing was saved. Freaking technology, man. Yep. I was flowing too. It was a good one. Yeah, all three. I don't remember anything I was saying either. It's all right. Maybe those are just conversations for you and I. Wasn't meant to be. Wasn't meant to be. But here we are again. And it's nice. And you're official. Official as a whistle on staff now. Yep. You're in your second week, full-time working. How's that going? Good. Just doing the courses for the meta verifications on Meta Blueprint. Yeah. I'm doing... Getting uh, certified. Uh, official. Meta Certified Marketing Science Professional. That's the certification I'm doing right now. Nerd. Nerd. Nerd, but I'm glad you're doing it. You're not really a nerd. It's yeah. cool. It's adding a lot of value to the business and it's going to allow us to add value to our clients also. So that's awesome. That's really cool. And then what else are you working on? Mostly just that. And then I want to get better at photography and videography and stuff like that. So you're working on learning those things, messing yeah. with the equipment more. It's cool. Spending time with some pros who are giving you some tips and tricks. Yeah. Showing you the ins and outs. That's good. Love it. Love having you here, man. It's been a lot of fun. Yeah. I mean, I would I'd take that back. I'm not going to say it's been a lot of fun because you've just been holed up in your office for every day, all day, learning and yeah. going through stuff. But it's going to get fun. We just got to get you learned up. Yeah. And then we're good to go. So anyway, um, yeah, we're excited to be back in the studio. It's fun. Now that we fixed some tech challenges, we should be flowing a little smoother now and getting a little more consistent with content. Yeah, it's fun. It's exciting. You're right next door to me. My office is right there on the other side of the wall Mine behind right Logan. Here. Your office is right here. So you're always in the mix. You should just start doing podcasts while you're working. Little dog podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we need to come up with a better name. Yep. Little dog. Little pup. The pup cast. No. No. That's kind of weak. Considering the, the pup podcast is by the guy who's three, four inches taller than me. Yeah. I don't Sorry. know. It's whatever. But anyway, hey, so wanted to talk with people today. You know, it's <laughs> it. Oh, hold on. Your mom's texting me. Why, Devin? We're on a podcast. What are we doing? Oh, never mind. She's being funny. She thinks she's talking about the JMU UVA game this weekend. I can read that later. Let me turn that off. Just like to make sure, you know, if your mama needs me, your mama needs me. Got to make sure I'm available. You never know. Something's going on. Needs help. Mm -hmm. Falls out. It happens to people sometimes. Just got to gotta be there. Got to be ready to react, son. Yep. All right. So anyway, what I was... What what I've been thinking about this year particularly is we've been working on lots of new things. And, you know, we've talked about team and additions to your teams and for the business owners out there. When you when you hire and you add the right people to your staff, it creates uh, margin. Right. And this is something that we've talked about on the show before, but it's what you do with that margin that matters the most. Anybody, if you, if you have the revenue and you can hire, you can hire and you can pay people and you can do that and nothing be effective. Ideally, you want to hire to do one of two things, either free up your time. So I'm hiring someone to do something so I don't have to do it anymore and or hiring somebody to do something that is going to allow us to create additional revenue. When you do that, though, the, the best part of it is when you create that margin and you're no longer doing a task that you can offset to somebody else and pay them to do, you should be taking that margin and figuring out, hey, what else can I be doing to create value for my business or create additional revenue for our business or improve the experience for our clients to assist our existing team better? Like, I, I feel like a lot of times people will hire people, they'll take tasks off their plate and then it's like, hey, I'm done. I don't need to do anything because I have somebody doing those things now. Well, 
if you don't replace the cost of that person by increasing revenues, your business is going to be done because you can't, how you can keep paying for staff if you don't grow. And so the, the better part is grow. You get somebody, you free up time. Now put that energy into something else. How can we expand? How can we grow? How can I better develop our people? And for us this year, We've made some pretty good hires and it's allowed us to get into a couple different things. And so we've gotten into the media business. We've gotten into, you know, sales consulting. We've gotten into the mastermind, you know, and, and the personal coaching and professional coaching. And this has been big. And this is stuff that never could have happened if I was still had my hands on leashes. Right. Or I was still insisting on managing every single trainer and employee. And, you know, so we've had to take our resources and reinvest them into people to develop them to do that stuff. So now we can go and open new businesses like the daycare. You know, we opened the daycare three years ago, then we shut it down for a while and brought it back. Well, we shut it down. Leadership, staffing wasn't the right people. It wasn't adding value to the organization. It had to go. Now, man, it's rocking and rolling. Brandon's over there killing it, but I got the right person in place. So it allows me, I don't worry about it. Brandon handles it. Now I can focus on other things. So we're able to impact more people in the community, grow our organization um, and do those different things. But people people get scared and they get so hung up in the day to day. They're not they're missing opportunities of other ways they can do things. And for me, when I created some margin this year, I mean, there's been a lot of stuff we've been dealing with this year and that I've been chasing and trying to fix, get caught up with. Problems I created last year get tightened up this year. All those things happen. That's just normal business type crap. But at the same time, I've been very focused on what else can we be doing to increase revenues and to diversify, you know, our income. And we've come up with probably this year, I don't know, two, three, maybe four ideas that are in process and growing that in the next 12 to 18 months are probably million dollar businesses, you know, mid six figures. Worst case scenario, all because of having a little bit of time to think about, hey, how else can we add value? Where can we take our expertise, what's special about us, and add value to somebody else? And that's turned around and we've created legitimate real businesses that are going to increase revenues for our organization tremendously. And all we're doing is staying focused on what we do best and how can we help other people benefit by what we do best. And this is way beyond the, the the dog training side. That business is rocking and rolling. We love it. We, we're so thankful and blessed by all of our clients. But guys, within your business, once your business is grown to a certain point and you have the support staff, what else can you be doing? What other opportunities can you be creating? Because one of the things for me is I've got a team. We probably have, what, Logan, 80, 85 trainers across the country, different yeah. locations, something like that. And these people are hungry. These are good individuals. They're smart human beings. They're motivated. Some of them want to train dogs the rest of their life. That's all they want to do. But a lot of them, they want to take on more responsibility. They want more opportunities. Some of them want ownership opportunities. They're great leaders. And so we had to create opportunities for them to develop within our company. And if we didn't, we we're going to lose them to somebody who would. And whether that's dog training business or it's something else, if you're not creating opportunities for your people, particularly the the, the strong ones, they're going to go somewhere because they, they have to have these needs met. They got to feel they got to feel fed. And so with us, we've shaken things up within our, our dog training business to create opportunities for leaders to lead and to have opportunities to, to, to grow and take on management responsibilities, maybe some partnership opportunities opportunities, uh, opening other locations, head trainer opportunity. It, it's great. And it's tremendous. And, and the people who have been able to take advantage of these opportunities, they're building great teams. They're doing so well. It's a lot of fun. But if we didn't have these opportunities for these people, I mean, probably 50 50 at best would still be with us because they're going to have something internally in them that's requiring them to do more. So as a business owner, I've got to be creating opportunities for people to do more. We've got trainers who are leaders in our in our administrative business. We have trainers who have developed, come up through the ranks. Now they're running the boarding and daycare business. We have trainers who have come up. Well, we have kennel techs who have come up and now own locations across the country. We've got opportunities for people. Come, you. OK, we built a business that you're coming out of school. You got certified as a dog trainer last year. You can go train a dog right now and do well. But you also have interest in marketing and media and different things like that. So we were able to create opportunities 
to start doing this stuff. And that's awesome. That's freaking awesome. Like, I'm so proud that we've been able to do that. I would not have been able to do that. We would not have been able to do that. Katie and I and Peyton and our and Larry and our, our senior leadership, we would not have been able to create these opportunities if we were all still hands on leashes training dogs, right? And so we've had to invest. <laughs> our business does 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 well. Um, but I don't I don't know if people think like, hey, we just train dogs, there's no expenses or anything like that. But it's it's an expensive organization to run. And there's a lot of people and there's a lot of costs and there's a lot of overhead from staffing and things of that nature. But that's the only way we've been able to grow. We would not have been able to grow had we not had that infrastructure in place. And so I've always been willing to go without in order to invest in infrastructure because I know, I don't know, I believe confidently of where that will take us down the road. And because we were able to develop people, because Katie's done such a good job developing people, it's allowed me to free up time to focus on the things that only I do well. And the things that I really do well is dream, vision, and take action. And then I communicate to Katie and the rest of my leadership team, hey, this is what I want us to do. And they're gonna go and figure out how to do it. You know, similar with the, the podcast stuff, you know, or the, the things that you're working on. I don't know how to do any of this. I know what I want it to look like. I know what I want it to sound like and feel like. I know what I want the end result to be of all these courses and certifications and stuff you're going through and learning. I don't know how to do it, though, but I know what we can do if you know how to do it. I know what we can create. And so all these things to say, guys, like we got a million things going on. And I love it when there's a million things going on. Like I'm, I, it keeps me excited. It keeps me fresh, keeps me motivated, keeps me stressed the hell out. But uh, well, I talked to somebody the other day and they're like, man, they said something about upset or angry. I was like, I just stay angry. I'm always mad. I stay mad. And I think I stay mad. And what I mean by stay mad is Hulk. the Hulk. Yeah. I don't have to get angry. I stay angry. Like I just, I stay mad when it's like, I'm just on edge and I'm on edge because there's so much to do. And so my push to you, all the reason I'm saying all these things to you guys today is what else can you be doing? What are you not doing that you should be doing that would be pretty easy for you to do that can create an opportunity for someone in your organization to lead? What are you trying to do over and over and over and over and over again that you fail where it should be an opportunity for you to say, hey, I need to seek guidance and help with this. You know, who who are you leaning into? Who are you being coached by? Who's your mentor? Who's pouring into you? And coaches and mentors and bosses and business owners, they don't have all the freaking answers. I don't have all the freaking answers. I'm just sharing experiences on this thing. I'm not saying it's right or it's wrong. I'm just sharing my experiences. And if somebody could pick something up from it, awesome. But somebody has been where you're trying to go. Somebody has achieved what you're trying to achieve. So rather than running around in circles, trying to figure it out, why don't you try connecting with that person who's where you want to be? Because I assure you more times than not, they're going to be willing to have a conversation with you and share things. Successful people aren't afraid to show other people what they've done. Successful pe The successful people I know at least aren't assholes. People will hesitate to reach out to somebody because they're like, oh man, that that person's big time, that person's wealthy, that person's accomplished, that, why would they want to talk to you? Man, because they've been through all the same shit that you're going through. That's why they'd be open to talking to you because they've been through all this crap before and they know how hard it was to grow and develop and build a business and hire people and fire people that you care about, fire people that let you down, fire people that you've invested years and years and hundreds of thousands of dollars into and time and energy and relational equity. And you have to remove them from your teams because they just don't fit anymore. Like the wins, the losses, the joy, the heartbreak, they've been through all these things because every major, majorly successful company, every incredibly successful individual all started out somewhere. They all started out as a mom and pop shop. No one started out day one as a billion dollar business. And we'll have people all the time like, no, we're not going to hire uh, you guys for, for training. We want to work with a, a local company. Like the fuck? Like <laughs> we... We are a local company. We, we are very much a local company. 
We're putting shoes on local kids. We're putting jackets on local people. We're helping kids in foster homes and in situations without families, you know, get connected and get the, the materials and necessities that they need. We're putting school supplies in the hands of local teachers. Like we are local. We're sponsoring local high school, you know, cheerleading competitions and little league sports teams. You know, we're paying local, very local taxes. We are a local company, but because we're big, people are like, oh, no, I need to work with someone smaller. Joker, what the hell are you talking about? You want a solution or you want to work with someone who's broke? And I don't mean it ugly like that. Let me let me take that back. Let me rephrase that because I don't want to go down that route. I think it's a little bit shitty and I'm not saying punish, but yeah, I will say punish to punish or remove the opportunity from the local company that's being highly successful because you're punishing them for their success. And like, I get that. I get that. Everybody wants to see you do well, but nobody ever wants to see you do better than them. Right. And and that's something I think that is embedded in most people, unfortunately. And I remember when we were starting out. Oh, my gosh. Everybody under the sun. Oh, Josh is training dogs. Josh is training dogs. Josh is training dogs. We've had some success over the last 10 years and we get referrals left and right. But it is not like it used to be where it was just me or maybe one other person. We were starting up and, and that energy piece. Now everybody thinks, oh, it's just there. And, you know, we we have to earn every bit of the business just like anybody else does. You know, every day our teams are talking to people that are reaching out about dog training and having problems with their dogs. They're talking to us. and They're talking to dozens of other places, too, I'm sure. And they should. They should be doing their research and whatnot. But, the whole, well, well, I want to work with a low. Co- you're too big. How am I too big? How are we too big? Like we're working one on one with you. We limit the amount of dogs that we bring in at any given time. A lot of these places, I hear these local small businesses. You know, my trainers work with two to three dogs at a time. These clowns are out here with 10, 12 dogs in their care at once. You can't even take care of 10 dogs in a day properly, let alone train and care for them. It's impossible. And so it's always funny to me. It's like, well, you know, they're cheaper. They're local, small business, local, small business. I want to support. I want you to support them, too, if they deserve to be supported. And that's my thing. This isn't like, oh, you got to work with us or whatever of our companies, but it's got to make sense. And, you know, don't confuse, you know, success or your interpretation of scale and size for whether a company is local or not. Every company started out as a local small business. Home Depot started out as a local small business. Lowe's, Walmart, all these were a local small business at some point. And then there's success. And don't punish a company because they've had success. Have they been able, I mean, celebrate a company if they've been able to grow and scale and maintain their reputation, maintain their um, quality, maintain their core values, and they're able to impact more people. That stuff should be celebrated, not turned against. Yeah, I don't know. Went on a little bit of a rant there. Sorry. Does that make sense, son? Yeah. Tracking with me? Like, it's just a frustrating thing that I've heard a couple of times over the last couple of weeks. And guys, like, business is awesome. Like, it's, it's great. We, we have an awesome team, book a lot of dogs, we help a lot of families. But it's funny when I hear that, I was like, man, because in my mind, it's still me in the backyard by myself training dogs. That's how I view our business. And I know that's a little bit ignorant, but in my mind, it's unbelievable to me what we've actually built. And it's like it was yesterday. And so while it's not me in the backyard training dogs, it's still one of my trainers in the backyard training dogs. They are independent. They are that local small business. And so, you know, you're when you when you decide to beat up a larger company, who do you think works at these larger companies? Your neighbors, your family, your friends. So you got to support them. And I'm not talking dog training right now. I'm talking anything like, well, I'm not going to support this company. It's not a local business, but their staff is. And so when you don't support the company, you're not supporting your neighbor, you know, and and this doesn't apply to everything, but it applies to a lot of things. Just make sure your reason for not choosing a company has more to do with whether you think they're local or not, because everybody there, depending on put food on their table is local. It's your people. So off that rant. And I'm going to circle back. All right. To what I was originally talking about, which was, you know, what else can you be doing to expand your business as you're growing? What? How did that piss me off? I don't know how I I got there. I don't know. It, man, piss me off. <laughs> I just started running. Someone said the other day on the fo- on a phone call, I guess, that your company was too big and they're going to go with someone else. And 
Well, no, that's exactly what happened. I'm just trying to figure out what, well, I guess when I listen to the show back, I'll realize what triggered me. I triggered myself. We all get triggered. This is supposed to be a safe space. COVID's on its way back, Logan. Stop. Have you heard? (laughs) No. Have you heard? No, it's not. You have to mask up, son. No. They want you to get the jab again. Get it. Yeah. Are we going to go down that route right now? Or should I circle back? It's up to you. You're like, you're not getting into it. You keep playing with that cord. You're going to unplug everything. And then we're going to end up here. We're going to end up here having another technical error. I'm just kidding. (laughs) Bro. Oh my gosh. (laughs) So the face Logan just made to me is the face he made weeks ago when everything failed. And, you know, he just did it again. And now I'm sick and disgusted. (laughs) That's pretty good. All right. Back to the original point and topic. Scaling, growing. When you're scaling and growing and you free up that margin, what is it that you do best that nobody else can do? Because often that's where your opportunity lies. What do you do that nobody else can do and that you just do better than everybody? And how can you take that and partition it and create additional value for other companies, for your staff, for your clients, whatever it may be? Don't get so hung up in the day-to-day stuff. Don't get so hung up in the, the tactical aspect of your company that you can't see other opportunities. So when you do grow, you do hire, you create that margin, you have the additional time, be strategic with it and think about what steps can we take to continue to grow the company? What can I do as a business owner? What can I do as a salesperson? What can I do as a leader to increase my capacity to take our company to the next level? Because it all starts and ends with you as the owner. We're going to go as far as I allow or enable or develop our staff to take us. If I don't develop our people, if I don't encourage and empower our staff, if I do not set a vision for where I want us to be six months from now, 12 months from now, five years from now, we'll never get there. Because we're just going to operate business as usual, day in and day out, same thing over and over and over again. It doesn't mean people won't have work to go do, but I'm not interested in being in the same spot two years from now as where I am right now. I'm not interested in being in the same spot 10 years from now where I'm going to be five years from now. I have no interest in that. I'm going to wake up every day. I'm going to go to work. I'm going to invest in myself. I'm going to invest in my family. I'm going to invest in my teams. I'm going to invest in my businesses because I want to grow. I want to impact people. And no matter what your business is, that's what you do. You impact people. I don't care if you're plumbing. I don't care if you're marketing. I don't care if you're a police officer. I don't care if you're a teacher. I don't care what you do. When you go to work, your job is to impact people. You have an impact on people. And if it's a good impact, a positive impact, like I'm trying to do, I want to impact as many people as I can. So anyway, do the work. Take advantage of the margin you create by hiring. If you want to talk scaling, hit us up. Shoot us an email, bigdogpodcast at teamjw.com. Let's set up a call and let's talk scale. We've had success scale in multiple businesses, um, staffing, you know, remote staff, different things like that. We'd love to talk to you about it and see how we can help you and what we can do. It's a lot of fun and it's a challenge, but you have special skills. You have skills that nobody else in the world has and you need to figure out how to share them with more people. We appreciate you. We're going to get this tech stuff figured out. But man, we sure do appreciate you listening to the Big Dog Podcast and we're going to catch you next time. 